So mortals will live in the Millennial Kingdom, but not only mortals. Let's just get the corroboration there. 72, 1 to 19 in Psalms. And thou the king with your justice, O God, the royal son of your righteousness, he will judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. The mountains will bring prosperity to the people, the hills the fruit of righteousness. He will defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. He will crush the oppressor. He will endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon through all generations. He will be like rain falling on a mown field. Mowed. Like, other, like showers watering the earth in these days, the righteous will flourish, prosperity will abound till the moon is no more. He will rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The desert tribes will bow before him and his enemies will lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of distant shores will bring tribute to him. The kings of Sheba and Seba will present him gifts. All kings will bow down to him, and nations will serve him. For he will deliver the needy to, who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence, from, for precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given to him. May people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. Let grain abound throughout the land. On the tops of hills may it sway. Let its fruit flourish like Lebanon. Let it thrive like the grass of the field. May his hand, name, endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun. All nations will be blessed through him, and they will call him blessed. 72.18 Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel who alone does marvelous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Pretty descriptive. Prosperity. No enemies and so on. Isaiah 11, 1 and 9. Let's see if I can get to Isaiah 1 and 9. Okay, underline this. I went back to the original text to do some typo fixing as well. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. I'm sure you've heard of this. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and the, of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live in the, with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. They're vegetarians now. The, the calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. The young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like a fox. Like, like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Micah 4, 1-8. One passage after another declares what heaven will be like on the earth. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. <clears throat> 1,400 miles by 1,400 miles by 1,400 miles. <clears throat> the Millennium Kingdom. Uh, many nations will come and say, Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the Lord, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The New Jerusalem, 1400 by 1400 by 1400. He will judge between many peoples and he will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. The Lord's point is this, with all that in, uh, in resurrection bodies and the Jews' perfect knowledge and longevity and sinless perfection as an example to all the Gentile nations who made it through to the Gentiles because they, to the uh, millennial kingdom because they believe and they go on and they procreate children. There's a whole num 
generation of children now, over a thousand years of generations. Every man will sit under his own vine and under his own fig tree. That's called capitalism. And no one will make them afraid, for the Lord Almighty has spoken. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods. He will walk in the name of our, our, the Lord our God forever and ever. <clears throat> in that day, declares the Lord, I will gather the lame. I will assemble the exiles and those I have brought to grief. I will make a lame, the lame a remnant, those driven away a strong nation. The Lord will rule over them in Mount Zion from that day and forever. As for you, O watchtower of the flock, O stronghold of the daughter of Zion, the former dominion will be restored to you. Kingship will become to the daughter of Zion, Jerusalem. Zechariah 14. Let's underline that. 14, 16 to 21. Then the survivors from all the nations that have attacked Jerusalem will go up year after year to worship the King, the, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. If any of the peoples of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, what will happen? The Lord Almighty, the King, the Lord Almighty, if they don't go up to Him, they will have no rain. They know He is supernatural and must be God because He controls when the rain comes and goes, and so on. If the Egyptian people do not go up and take part, they will have no rain. The Lord will bring on them the plague he inflicts on the nations who do not go up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Evidently, there might be some that don't. And verse 19 This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not go up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. No rain. You want to eat? Be more faithful so you can grow, grow your crops. 14 to 20. On that day the Holy to the Lord will be inscribed on the bells of the horses and the cooking pots in the Lord's house will be like the sacred bowls in front of the altar. Every pot in Jerusalem and Judah will be holy to the Lord Almighty, and all who come to sacrifice will take some of the pots and cook in them. And on that day there will no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord Almighty. Powerful stuff, the millennial rule. That's just a picture of it. Let's go to the back end here. Millennial rule. I, I got this just by looking up the studies I've copied and done and written myself. So I have a chance to refer back to what I've learned in the past. If you don't take notes and store them logically, uh, they'll, you'll lose the information. And there's so much here in the Bible that you're better off categorizing it and cataloging it. Get yourself a three-ring binder or get put this on the laptop. The Millennial Dispensation. Bernald Showers wrote a book on this, on dispensations. Traditionally, dispensational theologians have called the seventh dispensation, dispensation the dispensation of the millennium. Since dispensational theologians normally name each new dispensation after its new ruling factor or factors, it might be better to call the last dispensation, the dispensation of the righteous reign of Christ. The reason for this suggested name will become obvious. The seventh dispensation will begin after the second coming of Christ and will end immediately before the release of Satan from the abyss and his final revolt. We imagine after all this in Christ's presence uh, and exactly the new covenant being fulfilled to every detail. Guess who's out there still revolting? and his legion of angels. Now we looked at Revelation 20 and 1 to 6. This covers this in description. We went through a lot of, of uh, Old Testament passages. Now we're jumping to the last book of the Bible. You can take a look at that. Go ahead and read it. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. The abyss, the jail cells, 
And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he threw him into the abyss, and shut it, and sealed it over him, so that he would not deceive the many nations any longer, until the thousand years were completed. After these things, he must be released for a short time. That's what we're looking at here. Tribulation period. The beginning of it. We're going to have Satan there making his, doing his stuff right there in the millennial rule. Then I saw thrones and they sat on them and the judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God that those who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand and they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Okay. Resurrection right then. During the tribulation period. Not by the church. We've already been caught up in resurrection bodies, brought to heaven and back. And we'll see these also be resurrected. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. Those are the unbelievers. This is the first resurrection. The resurrection of the first believers. So we got resurrected during the, the, uh, the rapture. So it's a first resurrection of a kind. Blessed and holy is the one who has a part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power. That's the second and last resurrection. Going to the lake of fire because no one there has sufficient righteousness on their own to qualify to go into the millennial kingdom. But they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. See, so blessed is holy is the one who is part of the first resurrection. Over the second death has no power. They won't die and, and be condemned. But they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him a thousand years. Satan was freed and doomed. When a thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together for the war. The number of them is like the sand on the seashore. You know, the Armageddon number one already occurred. Right? At the end, then, and at the end of the millennial rule, they'll, they'll do it again. And they came up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of saints in the beloved city, and fire came down from heaven and devoured them. You know, the Lord got all money, and they, they just defy him. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Don't tell me there's annihilation. It doesn't say that. Tormented day and night forever. And then we go into the great white throne judgment and so on, but we can not digress that far. So 21 to 6, we read a little bit further. So, Ronald Showers talks about three ruling factors. One new, human conscience, human government, and the new theocratic rule of the Lord Jesus Christ. So apparently, the seventh dispensation will have three ruling factors which God will use to govern the world. Human conscience, human government, plus the theocratic rule of Christ. Inasmuch as the seventh dispensation will be the final one, it will be characterized by the final fulfillment of the promises which God made to Abraham and his seed. Once promises are fulfilled, they cease to be promises. Thus, promise will no longer be a ruling factor in the last dispensation. Dispensation in the, in the Greek is economia, or economy. You can understand that concept. In addition, although salvation will continue to be by grace through, throughout the seventh dispensation, grace will not function as a ruling factor. The evidence for this is that during the theocratic rule of Christ, those who rebel against that righteous rule will be executed. And those nations which refuse to go up to Jerusalem on the worship of the king and celebrate the feast of booths will be punished. Lack of rain to begin with. The most significant ruling factor of the seventh dispensation will be the righteous rule of Christ over the entire earth. The world will have a theocratic government in which the rule of God will be administered worldwide through his representative, Jesus Christ. The special revelation which God gave me according concerning the seventh dispensation is contained in numerous Old Testament passages, passages dealing with some of the major biblical covenants and prophets concerning characteristics of the future kingdom. Gospel passages passages in the epistle and revelation 21 to 6 according to this special revelation the messiah jesus will restore the theocratic kingdom of god which was on earth and before man's fall but was lost through the fall 
the absolute righteousness, just a rule of God will be enforced worldwide.